What is up world? My name is Nick, this is Swiffle Thinking, and in this video, we're gonna take a look at subscripts. So the last bunch of videos got really difficult. Some of those videos got really long. We looked at custom property wrappers, incredibly important, way more important than the next couple of videos. Uh, but I wanted to just throw these in there because I think they're really fun and cool things to know as a Swift developer. This video and especially the next video are not things that are common in applications. Like you might not ever have to actually write your own subscripts, but it's cool to know. It feels kind of smart and nerdy to know, and it's kind of fun to make a video about it. So there's one subscript that you've probably been using this entire time in Swift. And anytime you access an item in an array at a specific index, we use those square brackets and we put an index inside. And those square brackets are actually what's indicating that we're using a subscript. A subscript is basically just like a shortcut to some sort of action or method inside that data type. So in this video, we're gonna first take a quick look at the basic subscripts that we've been using all along, and then we're gonna build a couple of our own subscripts. Again, this is not something that's, that you need to know. This is not fundamental, but it is really cool to know. I think it's interesting. Let me know what you think after this video. Yeah. Welcome back everybody. The last couple of videos were incredibly difficult to make and luckily the next two at least are going to be much easier and much shorter. So I get a break and you guys get a break. But with that said, they are important. I think at least to know about, you might not use these that often in your code, but let's take a look at some more advanced concepts here. In this video, we're going to look at subscripts. And I'll explain what that is in one second. So let's right click the navigator, create a new file, a Swift UI view. And of course, we're going to call this one subscripts bootcamp. Let's click create. Let's jump inside here. I'm going to make the text a little bit bigger so that you can really see this one. So we're really not going to write that much code in this video. Firstly, let's do some setup here. I'm going to do an at state private var. Let's call this my array of type an array of string and I'll set it equal to let's do all lowercase one two three difficult stuff I know guys let's do another at state private var let's say selected item of type optional string and start it equaling to nil I love creating these property wrappers now because in the last two videos we literally covered everything you need to know about property wrappers if you don't know what if you don't know how property wrappers work check out the last two videos but now that we create these at states, we know exactly why we are setting this default wrapped value. We know exactly how this at state is working. And I love having that knowledge, even if we don't have to actually make custom property wrappers all the time. Anyway, let's create a V stack here and open the brackets. And I'm just going to put this array on the screen. So I'll do a for each. Let's do for each uh, item in my array. And uh, we need to loop on the a hash value. So we'll give it an ID of backslash dot self. That is the hash value of each string. And this will be e each string. And we'll put on the screen text with the string. Simple stuff. One, two, three. And below it, I'm just going to put a text that says selected. And we're just going to put in the selected item. Otherwise, none. All right. We got our array on the screen and I'm going to do a quick on appear. And when we call on appear, I'm going to set selected item equal to my array. And I'm going to access the index at zero. So the selected item right now is one. All right. Why am I doing this? Now, if you've been following my channel or even just writing Swift in general, you probably realize that most of the time we never use these square brackets, but occasionally, like when we access indexes in an array, we use this square bracket syntax, right? So if I wanted to access the first item in the array at index zero, I put zero here. If I want to access item at index one, so item two, I could put in the number one here and now select it as two. But the question that we're talking about is why on earth are we using these square brackets here and how come we never use them anywhere else? Well, really the square bracket is called a subscript. And this subscript is just for the developer's convenience because we could always manually do this ourselves, right? We can loop through the array and loop on the first and the second item. And when we get to the second item in our loop, we could return that. 
So we could do like a four item in my array. But Swift is giving us this handy dandy convenience subscript. I'll search for a subscript. So let's look at the documentation real quick. And it's kind of difficult to read, but we know that it's there because we're using it. So if I command shift O and open up the array documentation, I can jump to, let's look for maybe index. And let's do a subscript at index. Here we go. We can see this function inside. It's an extension of array where we have a function here called a subscript. Subscript takes an index and returns an element, right? So this function is what's allowing us to access the item at index one. And this square bracket is called a subscript. It's basically just a shortcut to access this function. So for example, we could write a variation of this function ourselves. So you guys don't have to write this, but for example, we could do an extension of array and create a func called get item. Let's call get item and we'll say at index of type int and we'll return an element. And we could say something like for index comma element in let's call self.enumerated. If index is equal to at index return element. And if we can't find it, maybe we'll just return nil. So this is actually a safe version of our original subscript, right? So these subscripts, if you try to access an item that's not in the array, it's going to crash your application. But now we can use my array dot get item at index, and it will safely try to get it. If not return nil, I'll set this back to zero. And we can see that the first item is back on the screen. All right. So accessing the subscript is basically just is basically just something that the Swift team has given us. So instead of calling a function every time, we can just very conveniently go like this. All right. Now, most of the time you don't want to create your own subscripts because this syntax is kind of confusing, right? We know that this works on an array, but as we're going to see in a couple seconds, it it's kind of hard to understand exactly what is happening here because we don't have documentation. Like if we call get item at index, right? We can see what this function is doing. When we look at the subscript here, we can't really tell what is happening in, inside the subscript. There's not much documentation on it. So I don't do this very often in code, but what we're going to do is create essentially a, instead of creating extensions of arrays, we're going to create some subscripts and look at how we can create our own variation of this. Now, before we get into it, I want to just walk you guys through some steps here. Firstly, the subscripts are based on a specific type. So we can see here that all we are doing is putting in an integer into this subscript. So if I go back to the documentation and I go to look at the subscript, it takes an integer and returns an element, right? And so when we go to call it, we're just putting an integer in here. And if I create a second subscript that just takes an integer, the compiler is not going to know whether or not I want to call my new subscript or this original subscript. So just to show you guys that real quick. In our extension of array, let's create a subscript. And this subscript, I'm just going to copy this function here and paste it here. So our subscript now takes an integer. Our new subscript right now takes an integer and returns an optional element. But if I go back down to my code and I try to call it, when I try to reload this canvas here, we're going to see that we're going to get a crash because am, error, ambiguous use of subscript. Ambiguous, ambiguous meaning it can tell which subscript we're trying to use. So we can't have two subscripts with the same type. And that's because there's no parameters in here, right? It's not like we're passing in at index of type integer. We're just passing in a value that is of that type. We could do something like make a double. And so now this should actually, we'll convert this to a double. And so now we have a different subscript that takes a double instead of an integer. So now if I try to access the integer number five, it's going to crash. But if I make it a double of number five, this is now accessing my new subscript, which returns an optional element. So my code is not crashing now. Let's try to make sure it works. Just go back to index number two. And it pops into number three. Let's put in index zero and it pops into zero. So this is working, but I would never actually put this in production code. This is incredibly confusing. 
their indexes are actually only integers and they're never actually doubles. So this doesn't make any sense to actually write. But I wanted to show you guys that you can only have one subscript for each type that you are injecting. So I'm going to actually comment this out because we should not put that in production code. And I'm going to comment this out as well because we're not going to actually use it. But let's look at one that we might actually be able to use here. So we're going to do, so let's try to get, so let's say, let's say maybe we have some code and we're going to say let value equals, and let's put the number and let's put the string of three. And then we're going to set the selected item equal to my array. And we're going to look for the first where, where the string is equal to the value that we're looking for. So we, when we run this, we can see that three is what is selected. Perfect. So we found the first item in the array and set it equal. Let's try it with number with two and it works. Now here we are looking for a string and not an index. So I could actually create a subscript for this. All right. So we're going to take this and make it a subscript now. So I'm going to create an extension of array. We're going to do it only where the ele the element in the array is equal to a string because we need to be able to match the element to the string. So we're going to create a subscript here. It'll be a function that returns an optional element. And this function will take in a, let's call it value of type string. And we're going to just call self being the array that we are extending. And we're going to look for the first where. Money sign zero is equal to the value that we are passing in. So now I have a custom subscript that takes a string and returns us the first element of that string. So instead of writing this code every time, I could now do something like selected item equals my array, and I'll access the subscript and we'll pass in two. And it worked. I can actually just pass in the value directly here. And it works. Let's try it with one and one works. All right. So now we have a custom subscript where we can pass in a string and get an optional value back. Again, writing this code probably makes more sense most of the time because most developers on your team are going to know exactly what this is doing. If you're new to a project and you see this, you're probably going to get super confused because you have no idea. A lot of developers don't know what subscripts are and then and then it's hard to find the documentation for it. And even if you see this documentation, a lot of developers will still have no idea what it's actually doing. So I don't recommend using subscripts all the time, but they are convenient and they are kind of cool and you can get really fancy with it. Before we wrap up this video, we're just going to play around with a couple other quick examples just to show you guys how we could actually use subscripts in another real world situation. So let's create a struct, call this maybe a customer. And we'll open the brackets. Every customer will have a name of type string and maybe an address of type string as well. Now in here, I'm going to create a customer and set it equal to a customer. Let's do Nick and address is let's do main street. And in here, I'm going to set the selected item equal to the customer dot name. Cool. Clearly it works. We could. A couple of videos back, we learned about key paths. We could also set the selected item equal to customer and then access the key path at name. That works as well. But in this video, we're looking at subscripts. So we could actually create a subscript. Let's pass in a value of type string and return maybe a string here. And we will switch on the value. So we'll switch on the string that's being injected and we'll do a case. If the value is equal to name, return the name. If the value is equal to maybe address, return the address. And we'll do a default and we'll return maybe nil. And maybe we can make this optional. So now a third way I could access the item, I could say selected item equals customer at the name string. And we'll see here that name appears on that. My name still appears on the screen. So it's just a convenient way to now access the name.
I would prefer this 100% of the time, but this is kind of cool. And in some cases, like if we access the array with an index that is not in the array, it would crash the application. If I want to mimic that, I could actually make this subscript non-optional. And if we don't have it, I could cause maybe a fatal error in my application. So I know as a developer, we should only ever use subscripts of name and address. So if I run this code now, if I put a name here, it works. If I put an address here, it also works. But if I put in anything else, it will crash the app. So this is now working just like the index is where it's only going to access the specific values that we support in this subscript. Another fun way that some people like to do subscripts is by using an index as well. So maybe I put an index here of type int, and this also could return a string. So here we'll switch on the index instead. And maybe if it's zero, we'll return name. If it's one, we'll return address. So now I can access the selected item equals the customer at index, what looks like index zero, but is really just going to be the name. Again, this is not clear from the call site, so I would avoid using it in code, but it's kind of cool that we can do things like this. So if you want to create shortcuts, basically, you can do that using subscripts. One example of maybe when this would come in handy is if you had some nested types. So for example, maybe I had a struct called address and an address has maybe a street of type string as well as a city of type string. And maybe actually we have a struct called city and a city has a, and a city has a name of type string as well as a state of type string. So maybe the address has a city here and maybe the customer has an address, right? And so maybe when we ask for the address, we want to create a custom little function here that returns like the, let's do a string here of the address dot street comma address dot city. So now if I come down to my code and let's just copy this down here as well. So now I come down to my code here, let's put in an address. Let's see, let's clean this up here. Street, we'll do main street. And then let's put in, and then let's put in a city. Let's do New York. And the state will also be New York. So now I could access the customer at the address and I get the full address back. Let's see. We actually should pass in here city.name. Cool. Main Street, New York. So now I have a convenient way to access the address. Obviously, we could also create some sort of computed variable in here that does exactly this. I'd probably prefer that, but this is kind of cool that we can do this. And we can even add more cases here, like case, case, maybe if we just look for the city, right? We could return the address.city.name. And so here I can call a city of New York. Partly so that you can make your own, but partly just so that we understand where the subscripts are coming from when we're accessing the index in an array. So. When we were accessing selected item at my array at zero, we were accessing a subscript. So you've probably been using subscripts all along. I would save subscripts for personal projects or maybe long lasting code bases where there's something very specific that is called all the time and you want to create a really simple, fast way to access some value. So for example, we have extensions of arrays, something like that or something like where we create a custom address. The cool part about this is that we can now create a, an infinite amount of, you know, values in this switch statement. So for any string, we could do custom actions and return custom values. Um, I don't think this is super popular, but it's pretty cool to know. Thank you guys for watching. As always, my name is Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.